unreachable. We are expecting what you are about to do. We surrender ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory and all the honor. Every victory belongs to you. Thank you for your grace this morning, for just waking up and the breath in our lungs. We thank you for the little things this morning, Father. And we pray that your, your atmosphere, your spirit will lead and guide. That you will take control, Father, in the name of Jesus. Be exalted and be uplifted, Father. Have your way in us this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel that you're working, and even when I don't see that you're working, you never stop. Stop working, even when I don't feel that you're working, and even when I don't see that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop. That is who you are. right here right now and he's writing on our hearts every promise I've given you every word I've spoken over you I'm never leaving every promise every word will come into fulfillment I'm never changing I'm always faithful I am the miracle worker I am the way maker says the Lord I am the God of promise and this morning I'm saying yes over you. I'm saying yes over you, says the Lord. That is who you are. 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 You're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. That is who you are. It's who you are. And even when I don't feel that you're working, even when I don't see that you're working, you never stop.
around you and I am saying I am restoring my relationship with you for I love you. I'm restoring my relationship with you because I have missed you. I've missed your prayers to me. I've missed spending time with you and I am coming to write on your heart to remind you who I am for I am coming to restore and as I restore my relationship with you so your life will be restored. As I restore the things that have been broken and the things that you have hidden, I'm going to restore it. For what was meant to break you, it hasn't broken you, but it has built you. But in order for you to be the strongest possible, you need to let me restore our relationship once more. So reach out to me. Reach out to me and allow me to wrap my arms around you. Let go of the hurt and let go of the pain and allow me to restore. Let me restore what the enemy has stolen. Let me turn it for good, for that is what I am. I am a good, good father. I will not deny my children the love that I have for them. My love is unconditional. My love is undeniable and I love you. I love you like none before and I'll love you like none after for I love you and I want to restore the relationship that I lost. So don't push me away. Don't harden your heart. Allow me to overshadow you. Allow me to flood over you with my love once more. Allow me to feel you once more. Allow me to hug you once more. Allow me speak to me like you used to cry out to me like you used to for I long to hear your voice and as the prodigal son returned, return to me for I am waiting with open arms, I am running to you, I am running into you because I want to hold you my child let me put it back together let me restore our relationship once more
broken and beautiful and have my heart all of me she can have my heart she can have my heart so I know that you still faithful you still love us and your mercy has no limits you come to remind us that you're still faithful that you still love us
sing this again.
Good morning. Just let the kids come in out of the rain first. And get up by all the ears. So, your ears, give me a moment. It's that time again. <laughs> the time for the tithes and offerings. And I said to Nathaniel, normally by this time I have a pretty clear idea. Sort of by Friday night I've got a general idea of, you know, this is where the Lord is taking me on this journey. And this week for some reason I've been getting a lot of different things from all over the show. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? And then this morning he gave me a scripture about um, something. And <laughs> I said to Nathaniel... It's amazing when the Lord pulls everything together. And the one that keeps coming to me constantly at the moment is obedience is better than sacrifice. You know? And sometimes in our life, things don't make sense. And I was driving the boys to school the other day. And you know that song we sang in Sunday school? The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his... Yeah, we all know it from Sunday school. Even your is like, Mommy, I don't want to listen to Salty anymore because it's Sunday school. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you expect from me? But the Lord spoke to me in that song. And he says, we need to build our foundations on the rock. And one of the things that many, many believers forget about is their tithe. Many people think, oh, I'm sowing a seed, I'm blessing, I'm doing this. But there is... A principle in giving your tithe. You know, I can give you long teachings on Melchizedek and Abraham and the covenant, the Old Testament and how it's carried into the New Testament, but I'm not going to do that. Do yourself a favor, go do some research. Really interesting. But the Lord said, he says, we need to build our house on the rock. So when the floods come, your house will stand firm. And so many believers forget the, the small principle of tithing. You know, I got asked this week, how do I pray for a blessing? I said, my dear, there is no way to pray for a blessing. In order to be blessed, you must give. You know, we are all parents looking around this room. We're all parents. How much joy does it give us when our kids come to us and say, hey, mom, thanks for dinner. You know, I would love to get a thank you out of my kids. <laughs> they forget to say thank you. Our tithe is our way of saying, Lord God, thank you that I have a job. Thank you for the roof over my head. Thank you for the income that is coming into my bank account. Thank you for blessing my company. Thank you, you know. Don't underestimate the power of a thank you, for it is God who gives us the ability to have a job. It is God who sends the businesses in, you know. I don't yet have marketers who make my sales for me, but God sends the members in, you know. When you are faithful and you are faithful in your tithe, and this is excluding your offerings and your sowing and your other seeds because that is just as important, but tithe, when you're faithful in your tithe, watch what God can do for you. When you obey the simple instruction of just give, watch what happens. You know, we had a situation this week where we were sitting there and Nathaniel was just going, I don't know what's going on with the gym. It's Rocktober. We should be pumping at the moment, but it's really quiet. And... I said to Nathaniel, do you remember what you told me three months ago? You told me you had to register for a course. You haven't done that yet because we got really busy with work. Okay? I said to him, you need to register for a course. So three months ago, we re-registered him and sales picked up because that's what God had told him to do. He got out of the car and said, I need to do another course. I said to him, we re-registered you, but you never actually registered for a course. So it sounds stupid and it sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to register you for a course right now. And he's looking at me like... BJ Eleanor, can you just stop already? Because <laughs> when, you guys know me, when I get a bee in my bonnet about something, I need to do it. Because if I don't do it, I won't sleep. It'll drive me up the wall. So I'm sitting on the couch next to him, and I go onto his student page thing, and I'm like, I think you can do this course. <laughs> and I register him, and I'm like, look, I'm going to pay it tomorrow, but watch what God does between now and tomorrow. Watch how he sends in the sales into the company. Watch how we'll pay for this, and we won't feel it. Guys, I'm not telling you a word of a lie. The moment I sent off, sent invoice, three sales came in within five minutes. By the end of the day, his course was covered with extra to spare. And it's a simple act of being obedient. When God tells you to do something, when God tells you to 
give your tithe, when God tells you to sow into someone's life, do it. It's not rocket science. It's a simple act of obedience. Lord God, my finance isn't mine. I don't work to get money for me. I work so that I can bless. I work so I can build the kingdom. I work so I can give my tithe and say, Lord God, thank you that we have a company. Thank you that my boys are healthy. Thank you that we have this beautiful facility. I actually said to someone, I said, I dare you for three months to give your tithes faithfully. I dare you. Watch how God increases. Watch how your business increases. Watch how you get promotions at work. Watch how you have no lack in your house. Watch how God comes forward. And that's a bold statement for me to say is I dare you to give your tithe and watch what God will do for you. Amen. Oh, yeah, three ways. I always forget the three ways. I'm so used to, you know, in the old days, you had the basket that went round, so while you're talking, they're doing the, yeah, okay, three ways. There is a box over there. There is banking details also on a business card over there. There is banking details that you'll see those on the live stream on the screen. And then we, if you go to our website, there is a donate page. Awesome. Nathaniel. Amen. Just pick up this little stone. The Lord spoke to me through the stone. <laughs> Confirmation word, yeah? Little stone. Um, yes. Amen. Where were we? Oh, yeah, we were talking about money. And everybody got really quiet. <laughs> Amen. Father, we thank you that you are in this place. That you don't need us, but we need you. We give you freedom in this house, Father, as always. Have your way. This is your house. This is your dwelling place. We are your children. We come to sit at the table this morning. We pray that you will come and have your way in us, Father. And thank you for this morning and the worship just rising on our hearts again, reminding us of who you are. And it's because of who you are that we can be, Father. So we thank you for that this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. We exalt you to the highest place. And we pray that you will bless the word now to every heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can I give you this? Oh, you got another one too. Amen. So come and sit around the table with me. Amen. And let us, let us feast on the word. Are you ready for that? I don't know if any other channels are on. We can maybe turn off some channels. There we go. So for the last few weeks, welcome to... Uh, my clients, those of you who don't know, this is our star client, <laughs> Nadine and Madeleine. Welcome to, to Sunday morning service. We are in a different setting this morning, aren't we? Normally we, we're pumping the weights, but today we in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So we've been, we've been going through the story of David for the last three weeks. I think, I think a little longer than that. We spoke about David and Saul and David and Jonathan also. But this morning we are at the, the climax. So if you came this morning, you came at the right time. This is the this is the, the, the pinnacle of the story. Amen. We'll see how far the Lord takes us, whether we go further into the story. But for now, we're talking about David and Goliath. That's why the stone is so significant to me this morning. It's a confirmation word, the stone, the rock. Amen. You see, I was standing at the back there and I thought to myself, these kids are really loud at the moment. And I went to my son and I went... <laughs> You better watch yourself. Put the egg in your I'm a car I sort. And then the Lord spoke to my spirit and he said to me, No, don't turn away the children. And, and I had a little giggle in my spirit. I said, Father, if they're in the house of the Lord, what better place for them? And this little son is a representation of a child who threw it through the door probably and it ended up here. And it became a confirmation word of what God wants to do in our lives. That's how amazing God can be. He can take little things in your life that look so insignificant and he can say, and this is a confirmation. I'm reminding you of my faithfulness, of my goodness, that there's still a plan and a purpose over your life. Amen. So thank you, Lord, for this little stone and for confirming the word this morning. I don't want to get too deep and too theological, but chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, if you want to turn your Bibles there, 1 Samuel chapter 16 speaks about how Samuel who anointed the previous king, Saul, the head and shoulders king. We spoke about that a lot in detail. The word says that Saul was a head above his brethren. He was a tall man, a man of stature, a gym man. Amen. He was, he was a big guy. No, you aren't. <laughs> He's already jumped with Ed Komiong. <laughs> he was a big man. 
And uh, he was very impressive. That's what I'm getting to. He was very impressive of the eye. When men and women looked at him, he looked impressive as a king. He looked like a king, right? So Samuel comes again in chapter 16, and he, the Lord says, Fill your horn with oil and go and anoint a new man for king. We know this is David. And when he gets to the house of Jesse, Jesse allows some sons to pass by him, and there's no one that the Lord has chosen. But Samuel was looking for another head and shoulders man, another big man of stature. And the Lord said, No, I do not look at the outward appearance. I am looking to the heart. Hallelujah. We're talking about a new generation. We said that this is the generation, this is the time for people after God's own heart. Not head knowledge, but heart knowledge. And the word says that Samuel said, Do you have any other sons? Yes, I've got another son, but he's tending to the sheep. He's among the people. And he said, Go and fetch that boy. And when David came to the, to the table, the word says, we, we spend some time on Psalm 23, verse 5, He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And his brothers were sitting there staring him down. And the Lord said, come in. This is my chosen. This is a man after my own heart. And the word says that Samuel anointed his head with oil. And the spirit of the Lord, we said last week, a beautiful translation says, the spirit of God rushed upon him. The spirit of God fell upon him. The spirit of God anointed him as the new king. Amen. And in the next chapter of verse 16, chapter 16, the word says, verse 14 of 16, the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul because it had gone to David. So, that, so Saul, to give you context of the story, lost the anointing. He lost the blessing of God. The blessing went to a new king, a man after God's own heart, not Saul, the head and shoulders king. Amen. Are you still with me? The next chapter we see how David goes and Saul calls a man to come and play for him, to, do, to get the evil spirit away from him. And David goes into the courts of the Lord. And last week we spoke about when you worship... Don't worship for people. Don't seek a platform. That's why I've, I actually, after that, I thought to myself, I wonder what, what my clients think of me standing there, because I don't really care. <laughs> Sorry, hello. I don't really care what you think about me here. Amen. I'm here to serve the Lord. I'm here to burn for God. So whether you like it or not, that is who I am. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but David went to worship God, and because he was worshiping God, the evil spirits were expelled. When you come to a place and you start worshiping God in spirit and in truth, there is no room for evil spirit. And that's why Saul, every time David would worship God, not play for Saul, but worship God, the evil spirits were expelled. Amen? And here we are now at chapter 17. Amen. Amen. The word says, chapter 17, David and Goliath. The Philistines were gathering and their forces were assembled. Verse 12, And Saul and the Israelites were assembled and encamped in the valley of the shadow of death, dare I say that, of Elah, and drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill, and the Israelites occupied the other. And there was a valley of death between them. Amen. Burn that in your heart, remember that. A champion named Goliath was from Gath, and he came out again from the Philistine camp, he was six cubits, and his height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet, and he said on his head he wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves, and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod, and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. So this was a mighty man, not only in stature, but also because of the armor he was wearing. He looked mighty. Amen. He looked intimidating. Say, say to somebody next to you, intimidating. Intimidating. Burn that in your heart. Intimidating. This man looked intimidating. Goliath stood and shouted at the ranks of Israel. Why do you come up and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servants of Saul? Important. Are you not the servants of Saul? He doesn't say the servants of God. Are you not the servants of the head and shoulder king? Hallelujah. Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he's able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and you will serve us. What a statement. What a thing of do you believe in yourself and do you believe in what God has called you to do? One man 
carrying the weight of a nation upon his shoulders. That's, that's quite hectic. Amen. For me to go and stand by myself and fight, and if I lose, I die, that's okay. But if it means I die and my family dies with me, so to speak, that's a heavy load to carry. Amen. This is what this, this giant was saying. Then the Philistine said, This day I defy the armies of Israel. He defied God, really. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul the king and all the Israelites were dismayed and they were terrified because of intimidation. Amen. I don't know if something is intimidating you this morning. I don't know your circumstance. But if something is intimidating you, God is saying, take heart. I am with you. Hallelujah. Take heart. They were terrified. The king and his men were terrified. And now the story comes to little David. Verse 12. Now David was the son of an Ephraim named Jesse, who was born in Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons, and his sons, in Saul's time, he was very old. Jesse's three older sons had followed Saul to war. Don't follow Saul to war. Don't back the wrong horse. Make sure in your heart that you are following what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. If you follow the wrong horse, if you follow the wrong spirit, you can end up in death. So make sure in your heart that you are being led by the Spirit. Amen. Led by the Spirit. The word said that Jesse's three oldest sons followed Saul to war. They probably had no choice anyway. The first born was Eliab, the second Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. It's like the, the, the scriptures is separating the oldest son, and it says, and David, little David, was the youngest. He was of a different spirit. Anointed. Amen. Verse 15, but David went back and forth from Saul as he played for him. And he went back and forth to tend to his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For 40 days, the Philistines came forward every morning and every evening he took his stand. Is there anything tormenting you at the moment? Is there anything bothering you at the moment? You, you can put up your hand. Is there anything already bothering you that's been bothering you for a long time? I can put up both my hands. <laughs> but yes. I'm so sick and tired of this giant that I've been facing for so long, and it comes out every morning. As I rise, the stress just... <laughs> Think yourself, Lord, not another day. This giant is once more standing in front of me, and he's tormenting me, he's screaming at me. Every day he stands as bold as a lion before me. And the weight of the oppression comes upon your shoulders. You think, Lord, not again. For 40 days the Philistines came, and he spoke fear into the armies of Israel. Every morning and every evening, he took his stand, just like your problem, just like your circumstance. Every morning, every evening, it looks at you in the face and says, who are you? I'm here to intimidate you again. The word says that fear entered the heart of the king and his men. Every time this man stood there. Now Jesse said to his son David, take an ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread to your brothers and hurry to the camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of the, of the unit. And I'm laughing at this because we'll get to the <laughs> see how your brothers are doing and bring me back some assurance from them. And this, is, this line is actually quite funny. Verse 19. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah because they are fighting against the Philistines. They're getting bed and breakfast. That's what's happening here. They are fighting no one. They are waking up in the morning to stand in line. Look at this Philistine, scared, and go back to bed for breakfast till we arrive again. There was no fighting going on in this story. But that is what the people thought, Baram. They had an army that was meant to fight for them. Hallelujah. They were sitting in their homes, trembling, thinking to themselves, when will we get good news of the victory? Instead, those guys were just waking up in the morning, standing there, looking pretty in their uniforms, listening to the shouts of the enemy and saying, Thank you, Goliath, and going back to breakfast. The enemy was, was shouting and declaring fear over them every morning while there was no hope in them. There was no faith in them. They are fighting against the Philistines. No, they're not fighting, Jesse. They are trembling in their boots. That's what's happening. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a good shepherd. That's a powerful story right there. How David left those he was leading under the capable care of another shepherd. He loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed him. 
he reached the camp as the army was going out to battle positions again to stand and look pretty and shouting the war cry. Why are you shouting the war cry, guys? Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines, facing each other again, and David left his things with the keeper of supplies, they ran to the battle lines. Look at little David, he's running to the battle, battle line and asking his brother, how are you guys doing, guys? As he was talking to them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out again and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard the screams. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him. They weren't even standing anymore. They were running now in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out day after day? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. That sounds like a good deal to me. Hallelujah. That sounds like a good deal to me. And David asked the men standing near him, wait, 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 wait. wait. Say again? <laughs> what did you say? What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies, not of Israel, but the armies of the living God? Your perspective is everything. Your perspective is everything. It's not the armies of Israel. It is not the armies of, of Saul, the head and shoulder the king. It is the army of God. Hallelujah. Who is he that he will defy the armies of the living God? And then they repeated again what they had told him. This is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking of these, to these men, he burned with anger. Why have you come here to embarrass me? And whom did you leave, those sheep that you were with in the wilderness? How conceited are you, and wickedness is in your heart. David, the man after God's and not. There will always be those who say to you, you cannot do it. There will always be those who say to you, you are not worth it, you are not worthy. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? I mean, we got, that, we got that message over us, didn't we? We heard that message so many times. Who do you think you are? But if you are aligned with the Spirit, no fear can come near you. You know, you, you know that you know. I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? So the, the words of his brothers came to him. Those closest to him and said, Who do you think are you conceited little boy? How dare you? You only came to watch this battle. Now what have I done, said David? I can't even speak. And I love David while his brother still speaking to him on the one hand, says to him, how dare you little con conceited boy. David says to him, can't I even speak? And then he turns to the, <laughs> quietly to the, <laughs> the soldier next to him. Tell me again, what is the king going to give the guy that kills that guy? <laughs> Don't you love David's spirit? Just, just whisper in my ear, what will be the price if we slay the giant? Never mind my brother. What will be the price? What David said was overheard and reported to the king. Amen. Amen. When you are anointed, nobody can stop you. Hallelujah. David said to Saul, this is where our, that was all introduction, by the way, guys. This is where our story starts. So wake up, smell the coffee. <laughs> The message is about to begin. In five minutes we'll be done. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him because I have heard of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I have heard of the goodness. I have heard of the goodness that will follow me and my family, my household, my generations to come. I have heard of that. Don't you lose heart any longer. I am here. Tell somebody, David has arrived. Nathaniel has arrived, you know, at high school, <laughs> let me not talk about my high school days. <laughs> at high school, when we were playing cricket and rugby, I, our, our coach always used to say, never fear <laughs> when Pakir is here. <laughs> it's the true story. <laughs> <laughs> never fear, David is here. Don't lose heart on account of this Philistine, I will go and I will fight him. 
Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight, for, fight this fight. Remember, there was a weight. Whoever would go into the battlefield had the nation behind them. If he lost the fight, everybody goes into prison. Everybody goes into jail. So no wonder the king first said, whoa, 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 little boy, just wait. Wait, please. You are not able to go out against Israel, this Philistine, and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. Tell somebody that the moment the giant fell. The moment the giant fell. It had nothing to do with a stone. It had nothing to do with this, this little stone. Hallelujah. Verse 34. The moment the giant fell. This is powerful and this is key number one for you in your life. For that giant that you are facing. For that thing that wakes up with you in the morning. And just, he's echo weird. Right? This is the moment. David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. Hallelujah. When the lion and the bear came and carried one of my sheep off, I went after it. I struck it down and I rescued the sheep from its mouth. My goodness. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair. I wish I had something I could grab and shake right now. When the lion turned on me with, after I took the sheep, I grabbed him by the hair. Come on now. Amen. I'm talking about a warrior. I'm talking about somebody who's got no fear in them. Brown. <laughs> he seized it by the hair. He struck him on the head and killed him. The lion and the bear. So, woo, I almost want to say a, a bad word right now in the chill. Let's only <laughs> let us all stay under the Holy Spirit. Who is that? uncircumcised man if I could defeat the lion and the bear the beast the kings of the field hallelujah the moment the giant fell was the testimony of God's goodness David spoke to his spirit as he was speaking to Saul he said to him I have done it before under the power and the hand of the most high God I will do it again you see this wall Huh? <laughs> Do you see this wall? You want, is your hand on this wall somewhere? Yes. Yes. You see, when you look at this wall, for those of you who don't know, this wall, Nathaniel, is here somewhere. There. When I put my hands on this wall, and I look at it, it's a reminder that we crossed over the Jordan. It's a reminder of what God had done for us. It's a reminder that the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. It is a reflection of God's goodness back to him saying, Father, you have done it before and you are able to do it again. Amen. That's what that wall represents. When we came in here the other day, when I said to you, we came for five minutes, it was simply to look at that wall. We can see the oil is still running from my hands. <laughs> we blessed this wall. We said, Father, if you've done it before, you can do it again for your people. Amen. That's what the war represents. So David said to Saul, the king, I have done it before. The Lord who rescued me, verse 37, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion, the paw of the, of the bear, will now rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Jesus. Saul said to David, you see, when Saul heard this, Saul recognized this kind of talk. And Saul said, you know what, young boy? Just go. Please just go. And let the Lord be with you, because I know He is. I know that God is with you. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Then Saul came, and he dressed David in his own tunic. He put his coat of armor on him, and his bronze helmet on his head. David put it on. David fastened the sword over his tunic and tried walking around, but he was not able to. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Anyway. Very interesting question. 
if any of you guys have a good answer for it right now. I think it intrigued David as a man. I think, I think David is a man of God's own heart, and I think he knew he was anointed already. He knew he was anointed. So when there was, there was stories of the goodness, I agree with you 100%, there is, it wasn't after the goodness, it was after the captivity that these people were in. The fear moved him more than the prize. If that makes sense. So I agree with your first statement there, but the goodness was coming also for his household. I think it did speak to his spirit. I think there was a, a drawing, a drawing to, there is a blessing here. There's a blessing to be taken, and the blessing, nobody wants the blessing. And I believe the Holy Spirit was saying to him, this is your blessing. This is yours. I've been anointed. You've been anointed. You've been set apart. He knew this in the previous chapter. We just read that. Goodness will follow you. We will read Psalm 23 right now. And he knew that goodness, deep down in his heart, he knew that goodness was meant for his household, for the bloodline of David. Oh, yes, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely, absolutely. 100%. I think there, there must be a... I would love to be honest and say I think David was so holy... That you, that you only thought of the people, but the bottom line is that there was a prize. There was a prize. There was a fleshly element to it, probably as well thinking, if I slay the giant, there's a lot of wealth coming my way. And I thank you. <laughs> and there's also the other thing where uh, if you ask three people, it's like, if you ask me, if that's the prize, why didn't you Why didn't you go? Why didn't you do it? So something in this man, I think that's, that's powerful, Brahm, what you just said, is something in this David could not understand that nobody wanted this gift. So if nobody wants the gift, I will step in and I will take what the enemy has stolen from us. Amen. It's a very interesting question that we will, we will continue to ponder on that one. Thanks, Gary. Maybe Chris has some revelation on that one too in the week. He does, yeah. Where were we? 38. So Saul dressed David in his own tunic. Saul put on his armor on this young boy. And the word that I want to give you this morning is don't let anybody put things on you that is not meant for you. Amen. Amen. I'll never forget when I started ministering and I started uh, preaching the word of God. So I play the guitar. You guys all know that. So I play the guitar and I didn't choose it this way. I play the guitar. And when you play the guitar, you, you're strumming the guitar on my right. So you praise the worship. So my shirts would get a little creased. Okay, I'm sorry. Really. <laughs> I'm sorry if my shirt's not 100% ironed and it's neat and clean. And some of the people in our setting had a really big problem with my shirt that was not straight and 100% ironed. In fact, the question came, who irons but our shirts? <laughs> we want to, is it, is it Eleanor? Is it, is it that lady? Because we, we need to give her some ironing lessons. <laughs> We need to give us some lessons on how to iron shirts because these shirts are always creased. <laughs> it's a serious, I'm serious. And I spoke this word, I'll never forget. And I said to him, I cannot wear the armor of Saul. I can't do that. My shirts are going to be creased. I'm going to come in my short pants and my tackies. I'm going to come in my t-shirt. I'm not always going to look perfect because that's who God called me to be. I will not worship less because my shirt needs to be straight. I will become even more undignified in the eyes of these little slave girls. In these people's eyes, but it will be for God's glory. Amen. So I want to just encourage you, don't put on armor that is not meant for you. There are those who are meant to look really pretty and wear their three-piece suits and their ties, but I'm a guy of fitness, man. I come with my shorts and I'm comfortable there. So let me be comfortable in my father's house. Be comfortable in your father's house. Amen. So David said, I cannot wear these. Meanwhile, the Philistine, verse 41, meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and over and said, this is after David went to the battlefield. This is just a boy glowing in health and handsome. And he despised him. Verse 45, we're closing now. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, 
the God of the angel armies, whom you have defiled over and over and over again. And say with me now, this day, this day, this is important for you. Now take this word for yourself. This day, the Lord will deliver you from that giant. Amen. The Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give your carcass, the carcass of the Philistine army, the army, to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Well, it doesn't say that, but I'm paraphrasing. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. They will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you all of these into your hands. Amen. So turn with me to Psalm 23. Amen. And this is my prayer over you this morning. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. We speak that over you this morning. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. You remember how David took the stones from the brook? He refreshes my soul. So I want you to see this picture as little David moving away from Saul, moving towards the battlefield now. Ready to fight this giant who everyone fears, who everyone is not able to, to defeat. And David speaks to his spirit, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. I'm going for the name of the Lord Jesus. And I want you to see this giant before you. Amen. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. I will fear no giant. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me in this fight. You have prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And you have come to anoint my aid with oil. My cup overflows. And I want you, this is so beautiful if you take it into the perspective of, of the battle that he was facing with Goliath. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That speaks about a future. That speaks about a hope. That speaks about life beyond the giant. Amen. And this morning I want to speak that over you. Is that there will be life for you abundantly above your circumstance and above the giants that you have faced. We speak in the past tense of to them now. Because we believe that they've been overcome. That they've been defeated in the name of Jesus. Amen. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now this morning a little demonstration. I want to give you just, those of you, look for your hand on the wall. If you've got a hand on the wall. We're going to call this wall the wall of the overcomers. The wall of the overcomers. And if your hand is on there before, I want you to identify it and I want you to go back to that place and put your hands on the hands that you had before and remind yourself of the goodness of the Lord. Remind yourself of what He has done. And if He has done it right here, He's able to do it again. Amen. That you will see giants falling in your life and that you will no longer be intimidated, that you will no longer lose your identity on account of what giants have said over you, but that you will live and live abundantly in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. Let me just say one more prayer before we go. Father, we thank you now for this moment. We thank you for this memorial stone. We thank you for a story of your faithfulness, the gospel of your faithfulness, Father, the truth of your faithfulness, that you are more than able, Father, to set us free from the bondage which holds us. We speak a hope and a future now, Father, over our future in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for the blood of the Lamb 
We speak the blood of the Lamb over your people right now, Father. And even as we are about to take communion, Father, as we are about to put our hands on the remembrance of your goodness, Father, we speak your favor now. We speak the blood of the Lamb over that now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those of you guys who don't have hands on the wall, Eleanor's getting some paint ready. And uh, if you would like to, please do join the hand of overcomers and let it be a memorial stone of what God has done today and what he's going to do for you in the future. Amen. Amen. Wilmy, you can take order there. There's also the table of the Lord. Where's Marty? Marty, say, you can go either or. There's freedom now. When you're ready, you can go get some communion. And if you're ready to come to the wall, please come to the wall. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Bill. surrounds me yes you do every time every time you do there's nothing to fear now for I'm safe with you when all I see is the battle you see my victory Yes, you do. When all I see is the mountain, you see the mountain move. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me right now. There's nothing to fear now, for I am saved and with you. For I am saved with you. For I am saved.
you go before us and nothing can stand against the power of God you shine in the shadows and you win every battle and nothing can stand against the power of God Amen. Father, we thank you for the blood. We thank you, Father, for what you've done for us on that cross. That there's authority and that there's victory in that place. So, Father, as we take of your blood, as we drink of your body, eat of your body, we want to give you authority once more in our lives to rule and to reign, Father, to make all things new again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance in the exodus of my heart. As you found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my release. Oh, i 
took me by the hand You walked me out in freedom Into the promised land Now I will not forsake you now I'll sing of all you've done Took this world up forever
Say that to me. Your song came to my spirit.
to go to go to go to go Too good to know.